Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Let's Interview the Finalists for the upcoming Mass Effect Tabletop Campaign Season 2, the sequel to Mass Effect Collision. I am here joined by uh, one specific candidate. This is Quirky. Say hi, Quirky. Hi. Some of you may have recognized Quirky because uh, some from the Pokemon tabletop campaign that is wrapping up as we speak. Um, but uh, we are going to dive headfirst into the world of Mass Effect. And Quirky selected uh, Quentin to reprise his role as Salo. Uh, from Mass Effect 1, to be my partnered interviewer. Uh, So, Quentin, thank you so much for for coming back. It's great to see you. Yeah, it's great to be back. I'm I'm super excited. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, just like uh, we always do, we're going to start with the out-of-character questions, and I'm just going to let Quentin run the show. So, go ahead. What attracts you to um, tabletop role-playing games? The creativity aspect of like m- making and shaping your own characters based on the world and having the choice to either do something that fits perfectly in the world or something that slightly deviates from the norm while still having it make sense in the world, if that makes sense. And uh, I like making up creative, creative things and making stories. I am a uh, aspiring writer myself, so yeah, this, it's really fun for, for me to exercise my creative juices through this. Very cool, very cool. Um, what about Mass Effect in particular um, are you attracted to? The things that I like about Mass Effect is what could be done with the lore and what is there and like the backgrounds of all the races and how it feels very reminiscent of like of like fantasy in a way while still being science fiction if that makes sense with the biotics being sort of mage coded and and I liked how they uh, used those sort of elements and put them into a new genre also I like the um, what you can uh, do with the game that the the canon games never really explored you could explore it inside your own head and make something really interesting out of it awesome yeah no i i agree i i also have writer brain so i like to think of all of those like whenever i'm playing any video game i'm like oh it'd be cool if this happened so (laughs) that's mm, i attracted to tabletop games for similar reasons um what quality would you say about yourself um makes you a um a good tabletop role player a creative mind to sort of give um, through my character sort of give like plot hooks to for the uh, GM to work with and to run away with take what they want to explore and then expand upon them internally through role play I really like that uh, flexible interaction and what what would you say is um, a challenge that you face in in tabletop role playing game? Uh, sort of getting comfortable, if that makes sense. Like at first, sometimes if I'm with a group of like entirely strangers, I I'm a lot more stumbly and jittery and just like eh, bah, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> and it takes me a while to re- really like uh, get my footing in a group role play wise 
and even out of role play wise. But once I am kind of comfortable in in a group, I really feel like I can kind of explore deeper into role playing and such. Got you. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think that uh, all of us that have ever been involved are very fortunate that uh, Angel Arts has the superpower <laughs> and together like ridiculously amazing people who are very supportive and awesome. So I don't think that's a huge worry here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think I'd uh, just like to jump into um, jump into a scene the scene is is going to to open in in the office of Salotech. I think is is, <laughs> is, is bar- Salo's not like super creative in like the naming department, and like I, there's probably been a lot of like pressure from Meridi to change the name because it's really dumb. <laughs> but it's kind of already a brand, so it's it, it's probably a little late. Um. And so there's this this really nice um, penthouse office of towering towering building, and Salo is at at his desk just feverishly um, working. And um, how how does Talos enter the scene? Before he enters, you would hear four knocks on the door, and then you would hear a robotic voice saying. Creator Salo, may I please enter? You hear a bunch of noise, like, jumbling around in there. And, um, uh, you, you hear, like, a, like, like, one of those, like, intercom, like, like, meh, like, Kila, why didn't you tell me that there was a cat outside? <laughs> and then, uh, I'll come over and I'll open the door, be, like, super surprised that you are... Geth looking and not like Geth 2.0 disguise mode, mm. and I'll I'll just kind of arm around the 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 shoulders like scoot you inside and like furtively look both ways and then close the door and be like, what are you thinking out of your disguise? Someone can see you. I am sorry, Creator Salo. I did not wish to disturb your work, sir. If it is a bad time, I can... I may leave if you wish me to. Then you see, like, inquisitive mode come on, and Salo's, like, looking at you and, like, inspecting. It's like, what is your model number? You um, don't look I, I am Talos. Talos 2.0. I am... Uh, Grace's model. Grace's model. Yes. Well, I think that a show of skill firsthand would be an author. And uh, Sella will walk over to his desk and push a little digital button. If you could bring in my children, please. Let us see how you handle Asari children. Ah, Asari. I have heard many things about the Asari. Grace had a uh, particular uh, interest in the Asari race as a teenager. At least that is what she said. Well, don't worry. You don't have to be prepared for psychic tantrums. Not yet, anyway. Ah. Of course. After a moment... um, a, a very, very tall, very um, muscular Quarian um, will come in with two kind of like hovering, like bonnet things and kind of like park them in the center of the room. Um, and then um, just kind of nod to me. Look, look at you and like cock his head <laughs> and then look back at me and then leave. But to see just how you handle um, handle these children and at the tail end of his words you you, you hear the, the intercom go off and uh, there's a voice that says um, Mr. Mr. Narzima one of the council is here to see you. It's just a very panicked voice. 
<laughs> and I, I just like very much could push the button on my Omni tool to speak, but just so panicked, run over to the desk because it's just <laughs> what he's used to. Pushes the button and is like, stall them. And they're like, they're already on their way. And I just like look at you and like just like look around and I'm like to hide you somewhere I'm, like pulling back curtains and it's like i just kind of move you around the office and like put you behind a curtain and then close the curtain and then stand back and then like look down and i can see your feet and i'm like no and take you out and then like put a plant in front of you and that doesn't work um and then i'm like you are a vi nanny bot new thalotech creation uh yes uh that is the designation that Grace gave me, yes. Yes, but you are not Geth, you are VI. I am, I am VI, yes. Okay, we should be fine. All and right. with that... With that, there is a rap at your door. Salo? Mr. Salovera, you hear a male Salarian voice on the other end. This is Valern, who is the male uh, Salarian member of the council. Uh, if Shepard rescued the council, so it's like <laughs> one of the originals, because um, in the Red Universe, Shepard did rescue the council. He's getting a little bit up in age, because um, Salarians don't live very long. But uh, he, you hear the nap tap again. Salo, are you there? He goes, uh, yes, yes, Counselor Valen. Uh, uh, please, please come in, and I'll push a button, another button, and the door will just, like, open by itself. Okay. Uh, Valen will come in. He's got a, a walking staff or something that he's using because it's getting a little bit harder for him to move around. And uh, he, uh, he, co he comes in with a very regal-looking... Um, uh, council gown that he normally wears with the hood and he says my apologies Salo for springing this on you at the very last minute but I was what I was in the neighborhood and I thought that I would drop by to take a look at that new Omnitool model you were talking about possibly revealing uh, or revealing at your next uh, talk that ah yes yes uh, the omni the omni tool blue the omni tool blue is hmm. I like that he says and as he as he as he mentions that he first notices the baby Asari which I believe are still in the room Talos would uh, be uh, looking sort of kneel kneeling down towards the little Asari children and says greetings. I am Talos, Nanny Bot. Salo, that, that's not the Omnitool Blue, is it? No, this, this, Counselor Valorn, is something new. You are the first one to see this exciting new product from Salotech. Not a word has gotten out about this. You are the first. Really? Me? He looks a little bit flattered by that. Do I need to sign an NDA or something? We'll we'll talk about that later. I, I, unexpected visit and all. Why does it look like a... It looks like a... Geth. I, I know, I know what you're thinking. And I was I was trying for and this isn't the final um, this isn't the final aesthetic model. I'm I'm going for a, a more Quarian look. This this is the Quarian line of Salotech's new Nannybot VI services. Wow. Salo, I realize that you just became a father recently, but I didn't think that you would end up turning into a whole business. Uh, with everything else you're doing, that's Actually, that's quite impressive. It it just came to me. I thought, wouldn't it be nice? And then I thought, well, 
be nice for other people, and then I blinked, and there's a whole production line happening. Hmm. It all just sort of happened. Sort of the moment. As you're talking to him, he actually walks towards the bot with his with his um, staff, and then you know he's looking it up and down, sort of sizing it up. He takes the big staff and he kind of goes whack, whack, whack against. Yeah, we'll say it's chest against Talos. Chest. It goes quack, quack, quack. Greetings. I am Talos, the I nanny bot. And as, but as he taps the chest, he, he some stumbles and says, says, I am Talos, the ah, 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 I bot, <laughs> nanny bot. What sort of services can you accomplish? What sort of tasks can you do? My services are to entertain children. My default age range is from newborn to six in human years. And I also have various comfort services, such as the makings of hot tea, both Dextro and carbon, and with that, his hand, one of his hands, um, detracts and retracts into like a teapot sort of thing. Uh, at that, the the uh, Solarian jumps back um, with a bit of a shock, um, and he says, "My word, you can transform your limbs into teapots." Indeed. But that is not all, my dear friend, 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 friend. This, I also provide cleaning services. And the other arm detracts and retracts into a feather duster. Salo, I think you have uh, outdone yourself. Where was this model back when I was in college? I, I believe this model back when you were in college probably would have been murdered on sight for looking like a geth. Sir. <laughs> would you be willing to give me a demonstration? Um, how would you say, mm, change this one's diaper? He says, pointing at the ba- one of the babies. It would be my honor, sir. He, he says, and he retracts both of his arms and back again into like no- normal quarian finger- fingers. And he... Uh, he goes down and kneels down to the Asari child and s- gently, Greetings, young one. I will pick you up. Is that okay? Do not be scared. The baby does look very uncomfortable as you are changing its diaper. And I'm going to say that Valern notices the discomfort of the baby and says, how good are you, VI? Maybe you should try to make the child more comfortable. Can you make it laugh? Hmm. Let's see. There's a um, small compartment in one of his in his chest, and he pulls out a little sock, a what looks like a little puppet, <laughs> and kind of and takes it and puts it on his head. On his Corian hand. The puppet is a Asari looking. It's basically like an Asari with a crown and a pink dress. He takes out another puppet and it looks like what looks kind of like a knight in silver armor and a little sword and a little horse. Cute. And then he He goes over to the baby, and as he switches from the voices of the puppets, his actual voice changes. The Asari princess says, Oh no, I am trapped in this high, high tower. And then the knight says, I have come to save you, young princess. His arm extends to, like, mimic him going up the stairs. I shall save you, my princess. And then a, another extendable arm comes up, and there's another puppet of, like, what looks like kind of like a Turian version of Maleficent. 
and this puppet has her vo own voice too, saying, Ha 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 ha, you cannot take her away. She is cursed to live here forever. Then the knight says, She is free to leave as she, if she wishes to leave, madam. And he, and the little puppet, the sword kind of goes out and hits the, well, the uh, Turian Maleficent. And, well, it seems to hit, sort of just tucks under the puppet's arm. And then as Maleficent falls, there's like this comically coughing, like, and then... <laughs> as they fall, as the, as the Turian kind of falls down, falls down from the tower and plop, <laughs> goes plop under the table. And the knight says, Come along, my princess. We must ride in order to go to the castle to be married. And then the prince and the princess puppet kind of plops into like a small compartment in the back of the horse. And it sort of spins around and goes down. Uh, Talos makes little blop, 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 noises as the, as the two ride off. I am Talos Mark II, created and built by Grace and creator Salo, and I would like to be part of your group. It is my duty and my purpose to serve others and to give them happiness of all ages although i do well with newborns i can easily expand my experience to other areas and perhaps access my combat subroutine although that is only for emergencies right it would be a rare occurrence except in times of war and strife i do hope that i can be of some use whether i take on antagonistic foes or a fussy child I will be there to get the job done and to serve others as others have given me shelter and hope hope yes hope that is the word I thank you <laughs>